Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. First things first, if you're new here, please subscribe. You don't have to, of course, but it really help me out and where I'm trying to get my channel to be. Do you often wonder, or struggle rather, with a wandering mind? Do you often wonder, how on earth can I get these thoughts out of my head? Or you're just not coping with something because it's going around and around in your head. It's actually quite... It's quite frequent for all of us, to be honest, and I would say that a level of it is normal, and a certain level of it keeps us motivated, and a certain level of it uh, keeps us on the right path in life. I think we all need a little bit of self-control, a little bit of a voice in the back of our head that to keep going, to work hard, and you're going to get there. However, when it gets too much and it gets all overbearing, sometimes it can be quite catastrophic to your well-being and certainly to your mental health and actually sometimes even to your physical health. If you've got a physical health issue going on, if you're struggling with balancing uh, your well-being and your mental health situation, that can certainly exacerbate any physical issues you have going on. So it's, it sounds easy, doesn't it? It sounds easy when you put it like that just to deal with it. But do you know what? My friends, my subscribers and anybody watching this, it really isn't. And the reason why I talk about these type of topics is because if I haven't suffered with them, somebody very dear to me has. And at the moment they are. And I'm not going to mention names because, of course, that's part of it, isn't it? We don't necessarily want to own up that it's actually us going through it. And if it was me, I would be saying that right now. I have had problems with... Uh, intrusive thoughts, uh, stress, over overbearing sort of stress, and um, and that feeling of hopelessness, which I think at times in life we can all relate to. And as I say, a small controlled element of wondering what if, or can you do better, or um, sort of that little that little voice in the back of your head, sort of saying you can do a bit better. A little bit of that is good. And I think a little bit of that, as I say, gives us motivation. But when it all becomes out of control and you find yourself, or you thought, I often like to put it that you thought about something so much that you cannot find your way back to your original self. What do you do then? Do you know what? The one thing I've been trying to do with this person, okay, is occupy them. Because I do find that actually when somebody is in that mindset or somebody's struggling with something, it, it they find themselves in a loop. So they start off worrying about it. Then they worry a little bit more that they're, they're not resolving it. Then they go to do something and something reminds them of it. And then time passes and then again, they're starting to worry about it even more. So they're worrying and stressing about it first of all. Okay. Then they try to do something but yet they can't quite enjoy it or they can't quite be happy because it's in the back of their mind. They're wondering why. Then you're worrying about that. And then this vicious circle. And each time you do it, a little bit extra adds in. Okay, then something else, something else, something else. This could be relationship. This could be financial. Could be career. Could be family related. Could be a bereavement. Could be something which is just giving you so much stress, so much overbearing pressure that you feel as though you're just about to burst. From my own experience of how I've had problems like this, okay, and I have, is that I often like to try, and if you can, it's not easy, I often like to try to help somebody that a little bit more right in that moment. So, for example, I know that probably doesn't necessarily make sense, but if you're really struggling with something right now, okay, one of the best things you can do, first of all, is take a walk, okay, take a walk or go out of the environment you're in, or, you're, or if you're in a room of your own, okay, and you're studying or you're working, for example, at home, or you're in an environment which you can, first of all, open the door you're in. You need to let this atmosphere, this closed box which you're in, okay, whether it be hypothetical or physical which you're in, okay, you need to break that you need to break that cycle first of all. So open the windows, open the door, feel the air, feel the atmosphere. If you're at home, feel the sounds. Really start to break and concentrate on that first of all. Then the first thing you can do if you've got relatives in your house, okay, go and ask them how they are. Because what that's doing straight away is that's breaking the cycle of what you're stressing about. That pressure, that hopelessness is going around and around. And my friend, it's not going to stop Okay, until you start to own it, until you start to control it. Sometimes you can't. And if you can't, forget what I'm going to say. Perhaps take snippets of it, but take care. So go and ask that relative, how are they? Ask if it's mum, if it's dad, if it's nan, granddad, aunt, uncle, friend, best friend, niece, nephew, sister, brother. You get what I'm trying to say. Ask them, how are you? They will know straight away that something, 
something, hopefully, something is going on in your mind through how you attempt in approaching that conversation. It will also break your cycle that actually, what? Your brain will start to think, whoa, we're doing something else. We're asking somebody else. I kid you not, it will mean the world to them that you've asked. From there, try and indulge and enjoy a conversation. And each more, open another door. And when I say that, I mean ask an open question, which leads to another open question. And try to be in that very moment. Try to be there with compassion, care, and love. Don't just ask somebody how they are. And if they say, fine, go and move on. Because that's not going to help you at all. You're just going to get right back to it. Go in and approach a deep conversation with your loved one. And if you can't do that, pick up the phone. Pick up the phone, call somebody who you haven't done for a while. That's going to break that cycle in your head. Okay. What I'm trying to do here is give you a sense of how I've dealt with things and how I'm trying to assist somebody in my life who means very much to me at the moment of occupying that. What I've done personally, because of course this doesn't just solve it, but it is a tool, okay? It is a tool which can help you. So when you feel you're in that mode of hopelessness and you can't control it and you're feeling down and you're feeling helpless and you really don't know what to do and you almost feel as though you can't take enough of breath because you're suffocating in it, okay? Number one, I want you to put into motion about speaking to a medical professional, whether that be a doctor or whether that be even just a chat with a pharmacist, to get you on the right path. Because there is help for how you're feeling. Okay. Now, one of the good things what you need to keep doing is talking and having those conversations. What I would say, exactly what I've just gone through with you, first of all, if you're always in an environment where you're in a room, a shutaway office, study, and if you can, okay, whether it even be at work, open the windows. Feel this incredible planet we live in. If you're in a home, if you're in um, an environment or a bedroom or a study or one one thing or another, open the door. Don't shut yourself away. Don't shut yourself away at all. Because in that space, it's just fueling that cycle going on in your head. Open the door so you can hear sounds in the home. If there's somebody downstairs, take yourself out of your environment through that stress and that sort of horrible cycle in your head. Have those conversations. Ask a question how somebody is. If you're knowing somebody's doing something, ask them how it went. What I do is study. So I'm 29 years of age and I've been studying ever since I left school, to be quite honest with you. I've had breaks through health and operations and one thing or another, but I love to learn. I love to develop. I love to move forward. I do not think that there is an age bracket where that stops, even if you're 29 to 109. As long as your mind is healthy and well and strong, Let's use it. Because another term which I absolutely hate is when somebody says that they are old. Nobody is ever old because in my eyes, old is end of, end of the line. Okay. Everybody is older. We get older. We grow wiser. We grow stronger. We develop emotionally. We develop well-being, uh, physically, um, all those great attributes. So the next thing I'm going to suggest to you is pick a new skill to learn. If you're stressed and if you're down, start to evolve. Work on you. You need to be spending time to develop yourself. Now, I don't mean go out and do a degree. There are so many different resources online nowadays to be able to pick something and to be able to learn a topic or a new skill. Now, for me, I work in finance and accountancy. Okay. I'm an accountant. I'm going to put it out there. Okay. Um, So there's always loads for me to look at, loads for me to review, to enhance my skills, to to keep on top of my professional uh, development. Um, The role I'm actually in, I can't necessarily tell you what I do, but I do work with figures and numbers, which I love. Um, So I'm always working on improving that. Um, But outside of that, which I also have a passion for, is uh, talking therapies, um, Everything which comes under mental health, uh, well-being, those sort of psychological uh, sort of things, which like sort of in an umbrella term, like good mental health. I have a huge passion for dementia in the background. I have a huge passion for well-being. Um, I love the Alzheimer's research charity. My grandmother battled Alzheimer's for many, many years. And uh, my grandmother passed away uh, due to the effects of that illness um, back in 2021, May uh, 31st, which is very, very hard. Um, and all of those things I have a passion for. Um, and I think just that topic, mental health, I have a huge, huge passion for. Um, getting people talking, getting people 
to unlock those doors in your head, which is keeping you prisoner in your own thoughts. Everything around that, um, psychology, I really, really enjoy reading about that, learning about that. Um, the mind, again, really, really imperatively important that we keep that active and that we learn new skills and that we keep things stimulated. So when you're feeling down and you've got that horrible, vicious cycle going on and on and on, learn a new skill, my friend. It doesn't necessarily have to be something which, oh my God, I'm never going to get to the end of this. Like, for example, a master's degree or something you can, of course, but it can just be as simple as learning to cook a new dish, doing something physical, doing something stimulating, doing something rewarding with a loved one, for example, cooking something different, picking a cuisine around the world and doing something from that. It's taking you out and breaking that zone, that cycle in your head over and over and over. Hopefully find a passion. If you love to read, sometimes I do find that reading sometimes helps, but for some people, not necessarily. Because, and I'll tell you why, because when you're reading, you're not reading it out loud. And for me, if something's going on in my head, I find it quite difficult if something's stressing me out or if I'm worrying about something to then read over that. Some people can do it amazingly, but not all of people can. And I can't. So if I choose to read something, I actually do shut myself away and I actually read it stupidly loud, but just moderately, so I can actually hear myself, I can actually um, hear the words, I can I can um, link to those words, and I can feel those words. I also suffer with tinnitus and a hearing loss, um, so when I'm stressed, it gets quite sort of, literally, I can hear it going on. So uh, that's that's what I do as well, another thing. So we've talked about not shutting yourself away, feeling the world and the environment around us is going to help making a conversation, breaking that cycle which is going on, or picking up the phone, okay? We've then gone on and we've then discussed learning a new skill, doing something for you, developing yourself, taking yourself out, taking that space which is being used for worry and stressing in your head, and you're using that space, you're using that energy to turn that into a new skill. So what more can we do? Here's the small things which I like to do. Okay, take a walk. As simple as taking a walk can be so, so important and so revitalizing and refreshing for the mind. It really, really can. Feeling the weather around you when you're out for a walk, taking in. And by the way, leave the phone at home because that is imperatively important because what a lot of people don't realize that shutting social media out, okay, doesn't have to be forever, really helps us stop worrying about what people are saying, um, what people are expressing, that constant desire which people in today's world seem to want to know every every single element of something going on. Sometimes not knowing is just as cool as knowing, to be quite honest with you as well. And you know, if you really want to uh, be so inclusive with social media and things, make sure you shut it off from times. So for example, I don't know, when you go to bed, turn your phone completely off, get rid of everything on social media completely for that time period. And then for example, don't switch it back on until, say, 8, 9 o'clock in the morning again. When you go for a walk, as we were just discussing, leave your phone at home, okay? Because what you're going to be doing, you're not going to be glued to your phone. You're going to be taking things in which you wouldn't necessarily take in. And here's something which I like to do. At least twice when I'm out on a short walk, if it's morning or afternoon, I smile at somebody or I say good morning or good afternoon, okay? Because straight away, people don't expect people to do that anymore. So it breaks what's going on in your head as that cycle. And it also shocks that person. And it puts a little bit more faith in humanity that there are people out there who still want to have a conversation. Okay. What next do you think I do? Well, my last thing, which I'm going to leave you with, my friends, my subscribers, is to sing. Now, I know that may sound stupid and silly to some people. But you know what? I'm going to just put it out there. I enjoy singing. And when I'm down, when I'm flat, when I'm worried, when I'm stressed, you've got to occupy your mind. You've got to switch on straight away, whether that be taking yourself out of your environment, learning something, going for a walk, doing physical exercise, picking up the phone, having a conversation, learning a new skill, doing something. So for me, literally singing a tune could be to myself, could be putting the radio on, could be finding something on YouTube, a karaoke edition, and I sing. Sometimes I sing a whole stream of different songs off. Don't ask me what I sing. Okay, you pull my arm. <laughs> I like the classics. So, for example, I like My Way. I like, um, I like, uh, oh, 
Matt Monroe, If I Never Sing Another Song. Um, what else do I like? Uh, Sam Smith, Writing on the Wall. Um, Impossible Dream, by again by Matt Monroe. Um, uh, what else do I like? Uh, Somewhere, of course, from the musical. Um, oh, goodness me. What do I like? There was Jesus. I love I love faith music as well. And that's another thing, which another thing. And I know a lot of people can't and won't necessarily relate to that because it is a very private and personal thing. But for me as well, if I'm stressed or if I'm over bed with that hopelessness feeling, then I do pray. And that can sometimes be in the morning, throughout the day, in the evening, whenever. If I feel I need to, then I do bow my head, take a few moments, and I do pray to the Lord above. And you know, that gives me great clarity. That gives me headspace to breathe. And to and I often often do think this, that when you share things through prayer, it it allows you to feel that you've shared it with him, so you can breathe, that weight's been lifted from you. Um, and yeah, all of those great things, so I really hope that you can relate to some of those. If you do want to ask me for a, a question or any advice or, or my thoughts or feelings or or how I deal with something, please do ask me down um, in the comment section below. Um, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And um, do you know what? I've really enjoyed doing this clip. And if I have helped anybody, then I really, really do hope, even if it's just a couple of seconds of watching this and it's helped you deal with what you're going through, um, then fantastic. And just on a last note to just sort of leave you with that if you are stressed and if you are feeling hopeless, um, don't despair because you're in a storm right now, and that storm will pass. It really, really will. Um, and from someone what's been there, and somebody watches watching somebody who they love and adore right now going through that, um, it will pass, my friend. It really, really will. I promise you that. It might not feel like it right now, but it certainly will. On that note, God bless, take great care, and I will be seeing you real soon. Bye for now.